thanks for coming by. Come on in. I'm so happy that you're here. If you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a chance. Please hit like, subscribe, leave comments. It helps my channel to grow. And if you're a returning person, thank you so much. Your support means everything to me. I'm truly grateful for all of you, for the entire ASMR community, really. Um, and I, I love my subscribers and my viewers. I just wanted to take a special moment to say hi to Molly. <laughs> and what we're going to do tonight is um, we have the last story in this volume of the Celtic Fairy Tales. Yep, we've gone through this whole book, you guys. And if you're new here, you read these stories together and they have very little illustration, so I don't have to show you the book. And you can just close your eyes, listen to my voice drone on, and zone out. Okay? Um, this is just to help you guys relax and fall asleep. Okay? So, let's get ready for that. And the first thing is to get our lighting the way we want it. And you can have it however you enjoy it. Dark light, sliver of light, night light, electric candles, no lit candles. Not when you're trying to relax or sleep, that can be very dangerous. Um, but these electric candles are great battery operated. And then get a blanket or a wrap or a throw, whatever you feel comfy in. And then make yourself comfortable, whether you're on the bed or a couch, a chair, cushions on the floor, whatever makes you feel good. Okay. And as always, you know what's next. Let's do our deep breathing. And that's just going to help let our brain know it's time to relax and to go to sleep. So we're going to breathe in through our nose for a count of four. We're going to gently hold it for a count of four and release through our mouth for a count of four. If you can do four, if you can only do one or two counts, then do that. Okay, this isn't a competition. This is to make you feel relaxed. Okay, so let's do the first one together. Breathe in. Hold. Release. Very good. Let's try one more. Last one, breathe in, hold, release, very good. Okay, so is everyone ready? And you can keep doing the deep breathing as long as you want, and we'll begin the story. And tonight's story is called The Ship That Went to America. The ship sailed to America carrying a great number of people who were emigrating. But when they neared land, the ship was wrecked on the rocks, and all were lost except for one man and his wife. The two drifted ashore, clinging to a piece of wood, and using sails and ropes from the wreck, they managed to rig up a tent on the shore and find themselves with provisions from the ship. But the food and drink were soon nearly gone. The man told his wife not to worry. I will go inland and see if I can see any houses or men. He set off and soon came into a huge wood. As he walked, he marked the back of the trees so that he would be able to find his way back. At last he came out the other side, but still could not find any homes. There was a mountain in the distance, so he decided to climb it and see what he could see from the top. By the time he had climbed the mountain, the day was nearly gone. He was tired and hungry and beginning to wish he'd never left. But then he looked down from the mountain and he spied a little hut at the foot of the mountain. So off he set to investigate. When he reached the hut, he went in and he found a table covered with a large white tablecloth on which was set a bottle of wine and a loaf of bread. Well, he 
he said to himself. I am hungry and thirsty. Surely no one would begrudge me some bread and wine. So he poured himself a glass of wine and cut himself a slice of bread. As he did so, a white-haired old man came in asking, What's your news, stranger? What wind has driven you in this direction? The man explained about the shipwreck. I hope you don't mind my helping myself to bread and wine. I was very hungry. Not at all, not at all, said the white-haired old man. Help yourself. It is there for people such as you. Are you married? I am, and I have left my wife in a tent on the shore. Do you have children? No, we never had any children. It is too late tonight to return to your wife. The day is over. Stay here tonight and I will give you food and shelter. In the morning, there was another bottle of wine and another loaf of bread on the table. And the man made a good breakfast. Then he said goodbye to the white-haired old man. His host said, before you leave, tell me, how much would you give me for this tablecloth? Every time that you spread it on your table, you will get a bottle of wine and a loaf of bread. I would give much for it, said the man, but really I have nothing to give. Well, the old man said, if you will promise to give me the first man or beast that is born on your property, I shall give you the cloth as a present. As the man thought he and his wife would never have any children, nor own any animals, he soon agreed. So the old man gave him the tablecloth, saying, Whatever it is that was born first, bring it to me here seven years from today. So the man walked back to his wife with the magic tablecloth. And they lived happily in the tent on the shore, living on bread and wine. Time passed, and after nine, nine months, the wife gave birth to a son, whom she named John. He grew up as a happy boy, but at last the seven years were up and the man said to his wife, now I must take John away for it is him that I promised in exchange for the tablecloth. At this, his wife began to weep and rebuke him for being so foolish, but he said, it cannot be helped. I must do it and I must go today. There was nothing more to say. The mother kissed her son goodbye, and the father led him through the wood and over the mountain to the little hut. There they found a table covered with a white cloth on which sat a bottle of wine and a loaf of bread. And again, they helped themselves. The white-haired old man came in and said, You have come as you promised? And the man said, Yes, I have. That is good. If you had not come to me today, I should have gone for you tomorrow. And you have brought me your son. What is his name? John. Has he had any education? Only what I could give him myself. Well, do not worry. I shall give him a good education. I shall treat him as if he were my own son, and I shall make him a fortunate man. The man had to be satisfied with that. He left John with the white-haired old man and went back to offer his wife the words of comfort that he could. Now John grew into a strong, handsome lad and stayed with the old man until he was quite grown up. When the white-haired old man told him, today you and I are going to climb to the top of the mountain. Look above the door and you will find a horse's bridle. Bring it with you. At the top of the mountain, the white-haired old man said, John, shake the bridle at me, and I shall turn into a horse. Then leap upon my back. John did as he was told. He shook the bridle, and the white-haired old man turned into a fine horse with a long white mane. John leaped upon his back, and the horse set off at a terrible pace, never letting up whether the ground was hard or soft, until they came to the sea cliff. There was a big cave there, and the horse said, Get off my back, John, and go into that cave. You shall find three giants laying down in it, dying of hunger. If you look into my ear, you shall find something to help them. John looked into the horse's ear and found a bottle of wine and three loaves of bread. Give them a loaf each 
and a swig of wine, said the horse. And while they are eating and drinking, ask them to remember the help you have given them. John did everything as he was told. When the giants were refreshed, they thanked him. And John said, I hope you will remember the help I have given you. Perhaps we will, said the giant. Then John went back to the horse and they rode down into the beach where the horse told him to get down. On the beach, you will find a great fish dying for want of water. Help it back to the sea and ask it to remember the help that you gave it. John did exactly as he was told. And when the fish was in the water, he asked him to remember the help. Perhaps I will, said the fish. Then John got back in, onto the horse and they rode on until they came to a great castle made of burnished bronze. The horse said, get off my back now, John, and go into the brazen castle. You shall see rooms full of gold and rooms full of silver. But by all that you hold dear, do not touch any of it. Just look around and come back to me. John did exactly as he was told. He passed through the rooms full of gold and the rooms full of silver, but he touched none of it. However, when he was roaming and coming out of the castle, he did see a large bundle of goose feathers, and he took one of those to make himself a pen. When he got back to the horse, it asked him if he had had a good look around. I did, said John. You did not touch anything or take anything. No, said John for he did not count the goose feather as something. Okay, leap upon my back, said the horse. They rode off again until they came to the castle of the king. Get off my back, John, said the horse, and go and ask the king if he needs a clerk. John did so and found that the king did want a clerk to work. John went out and told the horse, who said, accept the job until you get a better one. Should any trouble come upon you, Think of me and I will come to you. So John took service with the king as a clerk. Everything was to his liking except the pens that they used. So remembering the goose feather that he had taken from the brazen castle, he made a quill pen out of it. When he wrote with that quill, his writing was so beautiful that everyone remarked on it, even the king. They asked John where he'd gotten the pen. He told them that he'd gotten it from a brazen castle. I thought that must be the case, said the king. As you have dared to go once into the brazen castle, you must now go twice. For I have decided to marry the lady of the brazen castle, and you must go and bring her to me. I cannot do that, said John. You cannot do it? Well, you must, or you shall be hanged, said the king. John went to his room and began to weep. If only the white-haired old man were here, he said to himself. A moment later, the white-haired old man came into John's room. Now what is the matter with you, he asked. John told him what the king had said to him. And the white-haired old man said, You must have touched something in that castle, even though I told you not to. I didn't touch a thing, said John, only a feather which I made into a pen. Though indeed, it is a pen that has brought this trouble to me. <sighs> touching a feather was as bad as touching the gold or silver, said the white-haired old man. I told you not to touch anything. However, come with me and we'll see what's to be done. The old man turned into a horse and they went to the shore. And from there they could see the brazen castle further along the coast. The white-haired old man gave John a nod and said, Strike me with the rod, and I shall become a ship full of silk. Sail up to the brazen castle and anchor there, and then row over to the castle in the skiff and do exactly as I tell you, and then all should be well. John turned the man into a ship and ended up at the castle. When he rowed to the castle in the skiff, just as the old man had predicted, the lady of the castle came out of an upper window, and she said, where have you come from? From the Indies, said John. With what cargo, asked the lady. A cargo of silk, said John. Oh, please bring ashore and, and come and show me, said the lady. Oh, it is too much and I don't, don't know what would please you, said John. 
It is a mild day. Why don't you come to my ship? So the lady came out of the castle and got into the skiff with John. And he rowed her out to the ship and showed her all of the beautiful bundles of silk that were below deck. They spent a long time looking at the silk. And then at last, when they came up to the deck, the ship was well out to sea. What have you done to me? said the lady. There is nothing for you to fear, said John. I see that I have lost my brazen castle, she said. She put her hands in the pocket and took out the keys to the castle. Whatever happens to me, no one shall enter my home, she said. And she threw the keys into the sea. John took the ship ashore, ashore at that point from which he had set out. He struck it with the rod and it turned back into the white-haired old men. And then again, he turned into a horse. Then he set the lady upon the horse and went to the king's castle. The next morning, John went back to work as a clerk while the king told the lady of the brazen castle that he wished to marry her. I shall never marry you until you bring the brazen castle here and add it to the palace, she said. We must make John do it, then said the king. He went for John and said to him, you must fetch the brazen castle here and add it to the palace or you shall be hanged. John went back to his room. If only the white-haired old man were here, he told himself. In a moment, the white-haired old man came into his room. What is the matter now, he asked, and John told him. I told you not to touch anything in that castle. This is all your own fault, said the old man. However, come with me and we shall see what needs to be done. The old man turned back into the horse and they rode to the cave of the giants. Go in and remind them of the day you gave them the bread and wine, he said. John went into the, cat, the giant's cave. He said to the chief giant, do you remember the day you were dying of hunger and I came in and gave you bread and wine? I think such a thing may have happened, said the giant. Well, if you're going to ever remember it, said John, I hope you do it today. What is it that you want, asked the giant. I want you to fetch the brazen castle and add it to the king's palace, said John. Perhaps I will, said the giant. John went down to the white-haired old man and told him what the giant had said. That is as good as a cast iron promise, said the old man, and they rode back to the king's palace. The next morning when the king arose, he found the brazen castle added to the palace, but the door was locked and he could not enter. When he asked the lady of the castle to marry him, she said, I shall never marry you until I get a bundle of keys that I threw into the sea. The king didn't know what to do. And then he said, I'll make John do it. And he told John to get the keys or he would be hanged. Once again, John went to the room and called on the old white haired man. And once again, he said, the king wants me to fetch the keys from the brazen castle that were, are in beneath the sea. I told you not to touch anything in that castle, said the old man. Still, come with me and we shall see what we can do. The old man turned into a horse and then rode down to the beach. Call on the king of the fish, said the old man, and remind him of the day that he was stranded on the beach by the receding tide and you helped him back into the water. John went to the water's edge and called to the king of the fish. And John asked him, do you remember the day when you were stranded here by the tide and I helped you? I do, said the king of the fish. What do you want? I want you to fetch me the keys to the brazen castle from the bottom of the sea, said John. The king of the fish went away and was gone for a very long time. But when he came back, he had the keys. John thanked him and went back to the old man. They returned to the king's palace where John gave the keys to the king and the keys, the king gave the keys to the lady. Now will you marry me, asked the king. I shall never marry you until I get three bottles of water from the well of virtues, said the lady. Well, I can't get them for you, said the king. I'll make John get them. Once again, John went back to his room and called on the white haired old man. I know, I know, I never should have touched anything in the brazen palace, but if you do not help me, I will be hanged. Well, said the white-haired old man, come with me 
and we shall see what we can do. The old white-haired man turned back into a horse and they rode a long way from the castle. And then the, king, the horse said, get down from my back, John. You will find a lump of stone and strike me at the foot of my ear and kill me. Five raisins will, ravens will come to feast on my bones. You must steal out your hand and catch two of them. The other three, three will beg you for the release of the brothers. And you must say, not until you fetch me bottles of water from the well of virtues. The ravens will bring you the water, but you must make sure that they do not trick you. Pour some of the water onto my body. If it is the right water, I shall rise up alive and well. If not, I will not stir. Everything happened exactly as the horse had predicted. John killed him, the ravens came, and the three free ravens begged for the release of the other two. And they went to fetch the water. But when John poured the water onto the horse's body, it did not stir. So he squeezed the two captured ravens even more tightly. I will throttle them to death if you do not bring me the right water. And then the three free ravens set off again. And this time they were gone for quite a long time. When at last they reappeared with the five more bottles, John poured some onto the horse's body. And this time it rose up alive and well. So John let the ravens go free. John leaped onto the horse and they rode to the castle. On the way, the horse said, Give away three bottles of the water, John, but keep two. If you need me, think of me. John gave the three bottles of well, of water from the well of virtues to the king, who gave them to the lady of the brazen castle. She poured the water into a cauldron and set it on fire to boil. When the water was boiling, she leaped into the cauldron and washed herself head to toe with the water from the well of virtues. And she said, I shall never marry any man who cannot stand in the boiling water as long as I can. So the king jumped into the cauldron with her and he was scalded to death. John thought of the white haired old man and he came. John told him what had happened. Please take the water from the other two bottles and wash yourself head to toe, said the old man. Then you will be able to stand in the boiling water in the cauldron. But do not get in until the lady has promised to marry you. So John washed himself in the water from the well of virtues and then said to the lady, if you will marry me, I will leap into the cauldron with you. I will marry you, she said, and he leaped into the cauldron put his arms around her and kissed her. You are my man now, she said. So John and the lady got out of the cauldron and the white haired old man married them there and then. He made John the king in place of the one who died. And then the old man said, goodbye, John. I have done what I promised your father and made a fortunate man of you. He went away and he was never seen again. But if John and the lady have not died since then, they are alive still and living in the castle. Okay, darlings, it's time for you to go to sleep. Close your eyes, drift off, and know that I love you, I value you, I honor you, and I'm so very glad that you are.